This article here is interesting. Says, this is from India, or Indiana, it says. It says, uh, neuroscience is exploding in Indiana. This is the director of an undergraduate pro- uh, program at UI, IUPUI. It says, recent developments in, uh, highlight the growth of potential for high-paying research and medical jobs in the neuroscience sector. And Stephen Bohm's statement comes in the heels of President Obama's proposing a $100 million initiative to make research on the brain a national priority. Now, this is a big deal, this, this mapping the brain, uh, as they call it. It's the, it's the last frontier, remember, is your, your mind. And they want to get, uh, basically to find out where every thought can come from, where, where it's located, what, what neurons are in effect. And so what dendrites are in effect, etc., etc., what chemicals are at work, uh, in order to control all of us down the road. That's just about a big, big thing. I mean, this is a military-industrial complex in this, folks. Anyway, so he tells businesses of uh, health reporter Barbara Lewis, research, education, clinical practice, careers related to neuroscience, and says they're exploding in Indiana. And... Um, it says neuroscience touts several other unique to, to the region features, including a National Parkinson's Foundation Center of, of Care, Huntington's Disease Society of America Center of Excellence, and ALS Association Certified Center. That's the front. They always give you fronts to help people. They've always done this stuff. DARPA's buying this too, remember. Have involved. It says U.S. Department of Labor Statistics projects a 36% increase nationally in employment in the field between now and 2020. If we want to make the best products, we also have to invest in the best ideas. Every dollar we invest to map the human uh, genome returned $140 to the economy. Today our scientists are mapping the human brain to unlock the answers. It's not to Alzheimer's, folks. It's not for that. It says, now is not the time to gut these job-creating investments in science and innovation. Now is the time to reach a level of research and development not seen since the height of the space race. That's what Barack Obama says in 2013, State of the Union. And says, today at White House event, the President unveiled a bold new research initiative designed to revolutionize our understanding of the human brain, launched with approximately $100 million in the the President's fiscal year 2014 budget. The brain and brain research through advancing innovation neurotechnologies, so that's that's your your B-R-A-I-N, right? Initiative ultimately aims to help researchers find new ways to treat, cure, and even prevent brain disorders. As to, well, if, if, actually, if you have a thought of your own, you, it'll be classified as a disorder. I'm not kidding you, folks. This is what's all behind it. I say DARPA's heavily, heavily involved. I'll put the whole article up for you to research. Actually, it mentions it too. It says, key investments to jumpstart the effort are from the National Institutes of Health, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and the National Science Foundation, etc., etc., so they're all chipping a lot of cash into this whole thing. And some of the top universities are involved in it too. But that's a, the final frontier. That's the real f- the final frontier. And this article too is from Forbes, and it's talking about some quantitative easing and how it only benefits the, the nation's wealthiest people. Well, of course it does, because they always make sure that they, they looked after whenever they make a decision that affects the country, that, that first of all is to make sure they're okay. I'm going to keep living in good comfort and high on the hog. But I'll put this up, and it's got, it mentions uh, Bernanke and Polson and Geithner and all these different people involved in, in this kind of stuff that they're doing right now with quantitative easing, which is inflation. That's, that's a term for inflation. And uh, how it's good for you. Inflation is good for you as your dollar drops in value and purchasing power. It's good for you. Now again, two part of the whole, and it's, it's no surprises again, when you, you've read all the old books to do with the coming societies going back from 1920s to the present, because all the, all the top reporters of the time who were involved with the big institutions and, and uh, foundations that were bringing this, because they brought the whole culture industry in, uh, and this kind of culture to suit themselves, uh, massive promiscuity but no children, that was to be the, that was part of their motto at one time. And it's already here, of course, been here for quite some time. But uh, now the, a U.S. judge has lifted the morning after pill age limit, so you can buy it, I guess, over the counter. And this is a, it's been approved by the FDA since 1999 under certain restrictions, but now it's been done away with. So a U.S. federal judge has ordered the government to make the morning pill available over the counter to girls of all ages within 30 days. Judge Edward Corman said uh, such a decision by the U.S. Health Secretary to limit over-the-counter purchases of the drug 
to those 17 and older was capricious. The reproductive rights group which uh, brought the case called the ruling a victory for women. <laughs> and a U.S. government lawyer said it was concerning legal options. Anyway, uh, this is how things are happening now. Laws get changed by, by, the, by the court, just a high court judge, and that's it. And, you'll, and it changes the whole country in some ways. Uh, also tonight, too, it's a good article. Um, it says, Mind Control Experiment lets users wag a rat's tail just by using brain power. And researchers connect a human uh, to a rat via a computer without the need for brain implants. And then he dies rat lo- uh, was hooked up to a device to fire its neurons remotely. And it could be used to teach paralyzed patients to use their limbs again. That's what it's really for. You know, you know they've, they've really cared about disabled people for an awful long time in the military-industrial complex. You know that, don't you? Hey? And so it was done at Harvard, this experiment, and it says, it paves the way for mind-control systems. And researchers even hope that a similar system could be used to teach paralyzed patients to move their limbs again. Well, I'll tell you, you can imagine giving this kind of power to the cops. They'll just stop you from even moving again. In the first uh, experiment of its type, researchers have been able to control the wagging of the rat's tail by a human. And uh, the human volunteers wore electrode caps that monitored their brain activity using electroencephalography EEG. Across the lab, an anesthetized rat was hooked up to a device that made the creature's neurons fire when it was delivered an ultrasonic pulse to the rat's motor cortex. Soon, Shik Yu of Harvard Medical School in Boston and colleagues have created a system that connects a human to the rat via the computer. And it says, um, when monitoring the human brain's activity, uh, the researchers looked for specific EEG patterns to note, uh, which note to correspond to visual stimulation. As the volunteers watched the strobe light blinking on a computer screen, the EEG waved synchronized to match the frequency of the strobe. But, but, but when they changed to con- uh, concentrate on moving the rat's tail, the change in their focus, focus disrupted the EEG, triggering a signal to be sent to the computer. The computer translated the signal into an ultrasonic pulse, which stimulated the rat's co- motor, motor cortex, causing its tail to move. Using the system, all six of the volunteers were able to trigger movement in the rat's tail with little difficulty, and the system was 94% accurate. Professor Yu says it should be possible for two humans to use a similar system in the foreseeable future. I bet one day they'll build into your little Google glasses and that too, and you walk down the street and you can, then you become immobilized because you've, you've, you know, you're jaywalking or something, and the cops have seen you. But they're really moving ahead and, and they're mapping the brain, and here they go with the next part of it too. Quite simple stuff, really. And, and predictable stuff. <laughs>